So, Stoichism is, at my point of view, a pretty great philosophy. Like, there's a lot of things that I would say, like, yeah, you know, I would suggest people to do so as well. On the other hand, there are just also some things that I kind of feel like, well, nah, not really. But, like, it, it really depends. It really depends on the quote, quote-unquote, if it is like a quote or not. And, and all those things, like, there's several things that just uh, kind of vary or are the reason for why I'm having different opinions on Stoicism, I guess. I guess it's called Stoicism. I'm never ever sure about that. And therefore, we're going to go through Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. As a book summary from... Uh, I'm going to link it down in the description. But as always, there's going to be more after the intro. Because I actually wanted to go through something else. I kind of feel like that going through book summaries and it's actually a great website, I have to tell you. It is um, Natel... Nat it's N-A-T-E-L-I-A-S-O-N, which is Nataliason. And uh, he is just also having book summaries, even though they are highly personal, qu quite notes, actually. Uh, truly valuable anyway, because it's still better than just not reading the book. And it is amazing, at my point of view. Like, there's a lot of great articles outside there. There's a lot of great things outside there. But I still kind of have a funny feeling that those book summaries are often truly amazing. And that books in general are often truly amazing. But for all those people that are not really into kind of reading whole books, first of all, Blinkist would be a great option, or 12minute.com, which is actually, I can show you, uh, which is not advertised whatsoever. I've just only been stumbling uh, upon them again and, and whatnot. So 12minute is actually an app which is teaching you things, which is actually, I think it is also just giving it to you in an audio version. But I'm not quite sure if it is, it's actually about books and it is summarizing the books for you. So there's a team behind it and they are just summarizing the books and then they are giving it to you. And I think it is actually a pretty good thing. If you're not having the time to actually read the whole book, then it is actually pretty nice in my point of view. Also Blinkist, which is kind of the exact same concept. But yeah, um, so how is this possible? We read the books several times, highlighting and writing down everything, searching for key ideas. Our team meets, discusses, and summarizes the most important concepts and ideas, and then we created a microbook, synthesized, optimized, and unique for you to consume in approximately 12 minutes. Which is amazing. Which really is amazing. And there's going to be titles like Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, Influenced by Robert B. Cialdini, Anti-Fragile, and also Steal Like an Artist. One microbook a day would be 365 new ideas per year. Um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of amazing books just anti-fragile influence they are all amazing but uh, let's actually come back to letters from a stoic by seneca i've actually been starting to listen to the audiobook of it because it is for free i know you can find it on the archive.com i guess it is called like it is a public domain thing you're probably also going to be able to find it in librivox or whatever it's called but yeah um so if you're looking it up you're probably gonna find it I think it's uh, really, really interesting, even though understanding it as a non-native, as a uh, maybe not just perfect English speaker, uh, relatively tough, I would say. High-level thoughts. As a massively influential work of philosophy, I've enjoyed this book every time I got back to it. Great entry point for everyone or anyone into virtue ethics. There is also a podcast episode, as I'm just seeing there, uh, about it. The link to this article is going to be down in the description, of course. Um, and this is actually going to be like the book notes only. So it's basically kind of doing the exact same thing as I'm now doing. Um, maybe you're going to listen to his version of it. Maybe you're going to listen to my version. It uh, heavily depends on what you're just preferring, I guess. So the summary notes. It is man's duty to live in conformity with the divine will. And this means firstly bringing his life into line with nature's laws and secondly resigning himself completely and uncomplainingly to whatever fate may send him. And as I said, there's going to be quite some things that I don't understand. Maybe you don't understand as well, which is actually the first one. <laughs> um, it is like, the funny thing is that now I'm having hair in my mouth. Yeah. Um, still, I'm going to go on. It's, it might be like just some process. In this way, we shall arrive at the true end of man. Happiness through having attained the one and only good thing in life, the ideal or goal called, I read in Greek and in Latin, virtuous, virtuous cycle. Hmm? 
<laughs> for uh, which the English word virtue is so unsatisfactory a uh, trans uh, translation. Yeah, it really is. This the summon bonum, so summon bonum or supreme ideal is usually summarized in Asian philosophy as a combination of four qualities: wisdom or moral insights, courage, self-control, and justice or upright dealing. Nothing to uh, to my way of thinking is better proof of well-ordered mind than a man's ability to stop just where he is and pass some time in his own company. Uh, to, to just talk about this for a second. Being alone and being able to be alone, I think it's a, it's a valuable skill to have and attain because it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be that nice to, to be alone and whatnot. Like it's, yeah, it truly is, at least in my point of view. To be everywhere is to be nowhere. People who spend their life, their whole life traveling abroad end up having plenty of places where they can find hospitality, but no real friendship. I'm like, this is one of the these things that I first of all don't know because I'm not a great traveler. I am I just have been to a certain amount of places. Like, yeah, you know, I'm not traveling all the fucking time. I can also kind of think like, well, it might be the case. If you're only traveling, then there might not be just real places where you can be just because you're never just anywhere, basically, but always everywhere, kind of. But uh, but I'm not quite sure about this. Like, I am really not quite sure about this. So maybe you are a traveler. Please then uh, talk to me in the comments. It would actually be pretty amazing. would be looking forward to that. The same must uh, needs be the case with people who never set about acquiring an intimate acquaintanceship with anyone great rider but skip from one to another, paying flying visits to them all. Um, if it is literally about riders and or authors, uh, I guess kind of the conclusion there is to just stick with some things and get really into depth with it and not, and maybe not just charming around all the fucking time. So the same must needs be the case with people who never set about acquiring an intimate acquaintanceship with any one great rider, but skip from one to another, paying flying visits to them all. Yeah, I, I also kind of have a funny feeling that it could also be about habits. You know, if you're doing just such a lot of things, but you're only doing them on a really surface level, and you don't really know what the whole beauty is, is all about them, I, I can understand that it's somehow can make you feel like, well, okay, this is not some this is not something for me, you know? Whatever you're trying, whether it be, for example, soccer and you're playing for a day in a really shitty place and whatnot, which is, like, really top of the surface, like, even in the air, shit, then, of course, yeah, you feel it is shit. But if you just go really into depth of the beauty of the sport and, and just all these things, you might be actually really liking the sport. Could be the case. If it is about that. And I guess, like... This might be the philosophy or the beauty of philosophy that you can actually, um, like there's many ways to to talk about it. Like there's many uh, ways you can think about it as well and, and some things that you can interpret into it, which is like amazing, you know, because I don't know, I think philosophy is a really great science and a really great thing. Yeah, just because like... Actually, philosophy is one of these things that probably a lot of people kind of think about, like, okay, you know, it's it's, it's such a piece of shit and it's <laughs> really unnecessary and whatnot. But in the end, I think philosophy has been the first science, if I remember that correctly, but I'm not quite sure about that. And or it is one of the most important sciences just because it is explaining some other sciences or something like that. But I'm really not quite sure about that quote. But yeah, you know, let's, let's see. Uh, the must... The same must needs be the case with people who never set about, oh, I've read that, a plant which is frequently moved never grows strong. Makes sense. So always read well-tried authors and if at any moment you find yourself wanting a change from a particular author, go back to ones you have read before. So that you're gonna in some way keep being or keep growing, like going into depth as well with whatever the book is all about. But I don't really think that that it is like literally about books, that it's literally about reading. I think it's probably going to be a metaphor for, for as I said, like habits, for, for whatever you're doing, I guess. Each day to acquire something which will help you to face poverty or death and or ills as well. It is not the man who has too little who is poor, but the man who honkers after more, which might be about like spending and also earning. Like if you're spending, like if it's, it's not really often about just 
earning, it is often about spending. Like you, you can just make 30,000 30, a year and still have a really fucking good life. But if you're spending like 40,000, then it's like, yeah, going into debt and whatnot, then it's not going to be good. It's going to be pretty shitty. So I would say this as well. And something that the Stoics are also doing is consciously doing something that makes them feel not really good. In nowadays life, it might be uh, wearing something that you absolutely hate on your body, uh, having a just really fucked up haircut and whatnot uh, to just face those hard times that might be there, which is going to, like, if you can give a fuck about the fact that you're just eating oatmeal every single day and you're just looking like a piece of shit, at least in your point of view, then if the time actually comes, which I'm not hoping for you, but who knows, you know, who knows if just economy is gonna just really be fucked and whatnot, then you're not gonna be fucking unhappy because you've already done that, you've already gone over that burden of being unhappy just because you only have to eat shit and only um, look like shit, you know, which is also one of the reasons why they just literally eat oatmeal like for a week to just kind of train yourself to see that it isn't that bad, you know, it really is not bad, so to basically train yourself for those bad days or those worst days. Uh, you ask what is the proper limit to a person's wealth. First, having what is essential and second, having what is enough. Yeah, like it is something that they talk about, like they really don't often talk about like wealth, like having everything and living in, what is it called? Living in, uh, uh, like you're actually having just way too much. Uh, X, 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 not extrinsic or something. It's like excessive, an excessive lifestyle. But yeah, I know, but what is essential and what is enough? I guess it is like a really good way to say like, okay, you can be wealthy, but uh, having what is enough, what is enough for you, you know, could be more, could be more. But if you're looking on anyone as a friend, when you do not trust him as you trust yourself, you are making a grave mistake and have failed to grasp sufficiently the full force of true friendship. Yeah, these sayings are truly amazing. It is also one of the reasons why I liked uh, Marcus Aurelius meditation so much it really is a cool book really is an interesting one as well regard him as loyal and you will make him loyal some man's fear of being deceived has taught people to deceive them by their suspiciousness they give them the right to do the wrong thing by them I like that I really like that regard him as loyal and you will make him loyal which might just mean that, or which probably just means that no matter how you're thinking about things, will change things. If you think about him as a loyal person, then he's probably also going to be a loyal person. Not just because he then is actually a loyal person, person, but you think about him. Some man's fear of being deceived has taught people to deceive them. By their suspiciousness, they give them the right to do the wrong thing by them. It, it is a strong saying. It really is a strong fucking statement. For a delight in bustling about is not industry, it is only the resentless energy of a hunted mind. And the state of mind that looks on all activity as tiresome is not true response or response, but a spineless inertia. At the state of mind that looks on all activities as tiresome, which is like boring, isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, I see, is not true response. What does response mean? Response means relaxation, rest. But a spineless inertia. <laughs> spineless inertia. <laughs> um, I can... If you think about whatever you can be doing, if you actually truly think about all activities as something that's tiresome or something that's like fucked up and boring and, and like everything is shitty, as they say, it does not have anything to do with being relaxed. It's probably going to be about spineless in terms of I guess uh, not being courageous enough not just having the balls <laughs> for doing that maybe um, yeah I guess it's yeah I would say so ask nature she will tell you that she made both day and also night the good days and also the dark days the bad days and also the good days I view with pleasure and approval the way you keep on at your studies and sacrifice everything to your single-minded efforts to make yourself every day a better man. By the way, uh, just because there's actually a great, great, great quote there or great line there to just explain what Seneca and or let us by Seneca actually is, it is a conversation between Lucius and Seneca. Like Seneca is, I guess, some, somehow the mentor of Lucius. I think he's called Lucius. 
and they're just writing letters to each other. And Lucius has, have, is having problems, and Seneca is always writing the solution to him for his problems, which is something that's pretty interesting if you kind of think about it. And I guess reading it is worth it, even though it is, as I said, quite tough, at least for me, to understand sometimes. Avoid shabby attire, long hair, an unkempt beard, an outspoken dislike of sil silverware, sleeping on the ground and all other misguided means to self-advertisement. And all other misguided means to self-advertisement. Avoid shabby attire, long hair, and unkempt beard. Like, I'm not quite sure, like, it is somehow two-sided for me. It's like, on the one hand, you shouldn't be, like, um, look shitty. And on the other hand, like, sleeping on the ground and all other misguided means to self-advertisement. But yeah, like, let our aim be a way of life, not diametrically, diametrically opposed to, but better than better than that of the mob. Anyone entering our homes should admire us rather than our furnishings. <laughs> this is a good one. It really is a good one. Limiting one's desire actually helps to cure one of fear. Cease to hope, he says, and you will cease to fear. What does cease mean? Like there's a bunch of okay, come to an end, come to a halt. Cease to hope, he says, and you will cease to fear. Probably. Actually, I'm thinking about it. If I just stop hoping for something, if I, like, but it is something pretty bad. Like, I, I well, it is, uh, I don't know, like, hope and you will cease to fear. If you don't hope for anything, I guess it is, I somehow feel like it is more about expectations. If you don't expect anything, you cannot also fear to just not meet your expectations or that something is not meeting your expectations. I'm thinking about it in that way, some sort of. But yeah, but if it is about, like, hope, to just stop hoping, I guess, I don't think so. Don't think that it is, like, the best thing to do, or something. Fear keeps pace with hope, nor does they are so moving to get a surprise me. Both belong to a mind in suspense, to a mind in a state of anxiety through looking into the future. Both are mainly due to projecting our thoughts far ahead of us instead of adapting ourselves to the present. There is no enjoying... Uh, the possession of anything valuable unless one has someone to share it with. I would say so, actually. You know, if you're having just 700 Ferraris, I don't know if you're going to be really happy about them. I don't know if you're going to be truly kind of, yeah, literally happy about them. I don't think so. Kind of. But nothing is as re reunious to the character as sitting away one's time at a show. For it is then through the medium of entertainment, but vi vices creep into one with more than usual ease. But nothing is as uh, ruinous as like this satirous, devastating, catastrophic. But nothing is as catastrophic to the character as sitting away one's time at a show. For it is then through the medium of entertainment that vices creep into one with more than usual ease. I think he's about doing things, not really about, like, but as he's saying, sitting away one's time, like, just, you have to imagine it, once, one is actually sitting in the theater doing nothing, is not really just having any hopes, is not having any desires, is not having any goals, and he or she is just sitting away the time, like, it truly doesn't feel or sound that nice, it truly doesn't feel that, that of a good life, I would say, maybe, I don't know, but the right thing is to shun both Courses. You should neither become like the bad because they are many, nor be an enemy of the many because they are unlike you. Associate with people who are likely to improve you. Welcome those whom you are capable of improving. The process is a mutual one. Men learn as they teach. Yeah, I would say so. To me, says Democritus, a single man is a crowd and a crowd is a single man. The many speak highly of you, but have you really but have you really any grounds for satisfaction with yourself if you are the kind of person the many understand? Your merits should not be outward facing, would say so as well. It's something that I just see that I'm doing and I should stop. I, I should and I'm just trying to figure out a way to um, incorporate that in my life in terms of okay, actually doing it like consciously and, and also unconsciously especially. But yeah, indulge the body just so far as sufficient for good health. What does indulge mean? Satisfy. The body just so far as sufficient for good health, which I guess might be about wine back in the days, which might be now about chocolate, about bad food. Uh, yeah, satisfy the needs, but only so far that you're not gonna hurt your body with it. 
what you have to understand is that thatch makes a person just as good as, as good a roof as gold does. What does thatch mean? A roof covering of straw. So what you have to understand is that this roof covering of straw makes a person just as good as a roof as gold does. Or a roof made out of gold does. Trying to find like a just the meaning there because it obviously is also a metaphor. Might be about clothes, like taking it literally about a hat. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Maybe this is gonna be the last one. So what fortune has made yours is not your own. Uh, another one. But while he does not hanker after what he has lost, he does prefer not to lose them. Hanker means desire, crave, yearn, long have a longing. Okay? He does not crave after what he has lost. He does prefer not to lose them. Yeah, we all prefer not to lose things. Any man, he says, who does not think that what he has is more than ample is an unhappy man, even if he is the master of the whole world. If he thinks is not enough. If you think that something is not enough, if you think that what you're having is not enough and not good enough and you're not feeling grateful for whatever you're having, you're truly going to be unhappy. I love it. I love it. And we're going to go through it just tomorrow uh, or we're going to go just ahead with it tomorrow. I hopefully going to be able to just manage to read through it a little bit so that the reading is a little bit better, so that everything is a tiny bit better. But yeah, I wish you the best health of happiness and also success. And I also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy. Three questions. Why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea since a lot of companies started out with solving something that really pissed them off in the first place. But yeah, I'm gonna see you the next time. I at least hope.